She's the oldest little rosebud that Portland ever knew. Her eyes are bright as diamonds, they sparkle like the dew. She's sequined and rhinestone, she can bend reality. And Darcel of Portland is the only rose for me. And Darcel of Portland is the only rose for me. The first time I wore a dress, I was 37 years old. If you don't count a three-year-old scuffing around in Mama's high heels. Take off your glasses. Okay, now this is base, and I'm putting on with a sponge. And these are your lashes. I've got lashes. Not like these. Okay, now open your mouth. Your face is on. It's time for your costume. Ta-da! <laughs> hey, 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 I love everybody. Everybody I see. And I hope today is the day I... Darcel's on stage all the time. This face and the costumes and the glitz and the, and the hairdos can do and say anything. This is a Darcel delight. You buy one, you take the glass home. You buy six, you take Darcel home. Walter on stage is another story. So what do you do for a living, Brad? I'm, I'm a therapist. A therapist? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you came to the right place. <laughs> Two years ago, a friend of mine sent me a outline of things about my life that she'd like to know about in a book. I called Sharon Knorr, who is my director. I said, Sharon, I think I've got our outline for my one-man show. Look, look, Walter did it. <laughs> All of a sudden, yes, I'm out here without face on. I'm not hiding about it, anything. I'm telling you some facts about my life that probably a lot of people won't, wouldn't bring up. So it's been good for me, Walter. And hopefully somebody listening will pick up something that happened in their life and feel better about themselves, like I feel about myself now. I was born in 1930, Walter Willard Cole. We lived in Linton, and Linton, the Linton grade school, and all the kids called me sissy boy. I never got picked for softball, basketball, football. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, there comes a time in our lives when we have to stand up and tell the truth about ourselves and who we are, who we really are. I cried a river over you. My mother became ill, and she could, we couldn't go to town anymore, so my aunt, my mother's sister, Madeline, came to live with us. One night, Madeline came running into my room and said, Walter, Walter, get up. It's your mother. Run over the tracks and get your dad. I, I ran over the tracks, and he saw me coming, and he ran by me, and I said, Daddy, Daddy, it, it's dark and I'm scared. He said, run to get the fireman. Tell him it's your mother. He ran on, and I went down the tracks and up the hill to, to the fire hall. We got to the house, and the fireman went into the bedroom, and I waited with Madeline in the front room. I went towards the bedroom door, and... Just as I got through the door, in time to see the fireman put a, the sheet over my mother's face. I went over to the bed and started to climb up and the fireman took me by the shoulder and he said, no son, not now, not now, your mother just died. Died? My rabbits died, my chickens died, mommies don't die, mommies don't die. I backed up and stood by my dad's leg and put my arm around her. 
He didn't react or say a word to me. Nothing. I finally walked into the living room and there were two men in suits pushing a, a bed with wheels on it through the door and Madeline said, that's your mother. And she was in a bag. Those two men were taking my mother out of our house in a bag. Ride a river over you. Well, my friends, only one heartbreak in your life is worth a river. After that, maybe a puddle or stream, but never a second river. After my mother died, when my aunt joined our house, she stayed, lived in the front bedroom, and I shared a bedroom with my father. He'd go to work and go to the taverns, come home in the middle of the night, and wake me up. He said, don't tell. Don't tell anyone. At the time, to me, it wasn't abuse. For the first time since my mother died, he was paying attention to me. He was touching me, loving me, hugging me. I was part of his life then. It wasn't abuse to me then. I was, I, I was being loved by the man I loved. Nineteen eighty-four. I got a call from my father's doctor. He said, "Your father's in the hospital with emphysema, and I have a very difficult question to ask you, Walter. If your father starts to die, do we save him, or do we let him go?" I said, "Let him go." I got a call. December 25th at 7 o'clock in the morning, 1984, my father had died. I felt nothing inside. Two weeks later, I got a letter in the mail. It was his will. The second paragraph said, I have never fathered a child. Sissy boy didn't cut it anymore. Queer, faggot. They don't work unless you tell the truth. I dated a girl from Linton named Jeanette. We did it all through high school. When we graduated from high school, you either went to college if you had the money or you got married and we got married. We had two lovely children. I first realized that I might be gay or bisexual after we were married. I didn't have a choice. There was no choice at all for me. I had to stop lying to them. I didn't say, oh, I can stay in the closet for another 30 years. No, I couldn't. I knew when I met Rock Newhart that I wanted to be with him the rest of my life. And it's been over 40 years now. If I hadn't changed who I was, no, admitted who I was, I'd probably be dead now. Because I'd be sitting on a couch, retiring from Fred Meyer management. <laughs> Not for me. Not for me. Walter and Darcel like a split personality. We meet, meet new people and I hear him whisper to, to Roxy, 
what should I call him, Walter or Tarsell? From the bottom of my heart, just call me Darcel.